Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ambassador, when you're my age, you'll be depending on your grandchildren's <laughs> advice, not just your children's. I, let, um, you know, in the 20 years that I've been on this committee, we've uh, talked about our, uh, and you and I talked about this too, but the fact that we have the oldest nuclear arsenal in the world, that most of our, our warheads are 30, 40 years old, and our delivery system, if you look at the triad, you're looking at uh, the B-52, maybe 50 years uh, old, and then, of course, the, uh, the, the, um, uh, the ICBMs and the nuclear submarines. Now, this is, we've talked about this for a, a, a long period of time, and I'm looking now at the new situation, the new threat that's out there, the new threat that you have talked about, both of you, uh, as well as our panel that we had last week that, was, uh, that talked about this for quite some time, Kissinger, Albright, and, and Schultz. Now, in, in light of, of, of the, the new threat, should, this, should more attention be given to this than, uh, than we have in the past? And I, I noticed when you, you used the word, you ticked off five of the areas that have not been given proper attention. This wasn't one of those areas. Do you think it should be? Um, Senator Inhofe, I was, as Undersecretary, a member of the Nuclear Weapons Council and, and followed the issues closely and was very, very concerned during, throughout my tenure uh, about the state of our aging um, nuclear force. Um, we haven't built a new nuclear weapon since 1988. We haven't tested one since 1991. Um, there are lots of ways that we maintain um, the safety and, and surety of the stockpile. Uh, but as time goes on, um, and particularly uh, not only as the you know, inevitable corrosion and, and degradation of components goes on, but also the loss of human capital because we're not able to um, get uh, the best and um, brightest minds in the field uh, the way we used to be able to do, I think it's a matter of really increasing concern. Um, we're unfortunately, I think, living through a period where the risks of an increasingly proliferated world are, are growing. We already have North Korea testing, having tested nuclear weapons. Um, Iran is uh, moving very close to being a th nuclear threshold state. Hopefully there will be an agreement that will constrain that. But, um, but if there isn't, um, or if Iran uh, you know, maintains a, a near breakout uh, capacity, uh, there's a real prospect that we may get other states in the region who decide to develop their own nuclear capabilities. In the meantime, uh, you've got uh, growing nuclear stockpiles in, um, uh, in Pakistan and in India, uh, China's uh, stock, uh, um, the, the Chinese inventory is also growing uh, in terms of weapons, although albeit more slowly. Um, and Russia is modernizing its nuclear force. And I, I do worry, I think I applaud the administration for the very good work it's done and the B61 modernization effort. Um, but I do think there's much more that needs to be done in this, yeah. in this area. Yeah. Well, Ambassador, I, that gets into uh, what I was going to talk about, because I've been concerned about Iran for ever since our <clears throat> unclassified uh, intelligence came out in 2007 talking about when they were going to have the, the capabilities being 2015, which is where we are uh, right now. And I'm concerned about the maligned uh, activities. Uh, there's been several published reports talking about Sudan. This is all coming from Iran. Sudan, Gaza, Yemen, Bahrain, uh, Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon. Uh, I'm, I don't think we can assume that our concern should be strictly with Iran. And this is my concern that, that I've had for a long time. We're supposed to be, and historically have been, the nuclear umbrella. Uh, our umbrella has holes in it. We have serious problems. And when you look at uh, countries like Saudi Arabia and Turkey and others, if they see what our capabilities aren't, then you know, or I would assume, they're going to be involved, and we're going to have another arms race coming, uh, uh, coming up. Does that concern uh, the, the two of you? I, I think our, um, our strategic uh, nuclear forces have been one of our huge strategic comparative advantages as a nation since 1945. Yeah. Um, and I think we cannot afford uh, to let that advantage uh, go by the wayside. Extended deterrence uh, of our allies uh, in Asia, in Europe, uh, and now increasingly um, in the Middle East, 
uh, has always been a very difficult proposition. It was a difficult proposition when we had a much larger uh, stockpile and inventory of nuclear weapons to make uh, our willingness to um, use those weapons in defense of our allies. That was a very difficult proposition to convince people of. Uh, it's still going to be uh, a difficult proposition to convince people about. Um, but it will be much harder to do, uh, as you say, Senator Inhofe, if the, the appearance is that we are not paying sufficient attention to the stockpile and, and to uh, the modernization of our forces. All right. Well, thank you. My time has expired, but just uh, as I did for the uh, panel of Kissinger, Albright and Schultz, I would like to have you, for the record, submit something talking about the, the fact that for the 20 years that we were, I was involved in this committee before, we had the policy of major of being able to fight two wars or two major theater conflicts and that policy seemingly changing now in your analysis of the new policy for the record thank you mr chairman